Who is the person you talk to most? Is it your partner, your parents, your child, or your friends? If you picked any of these answers, then you are wrong. The person you talk to most is actually yourself. The average person talks to themselves about 50,000 times a day. And unfortunately, 80% of that self-talk is negative. How can we make sure we have a kind of self-talk that makes us feel better and also at the same time helps us improve? Today I'm going to show you five tips on how you can improve your self-talk. So the first tip would be that you want to track your self-talk. This is easier as it sounds because most of the time when we're ruminating it's when we're not working so when we haven't really got anything to do because when we are working we're distracted from our negative self-talk whereas when we are bored we often tend to then fall into these negative spirals of self-talk. And in those times, you then want to track what it is you're actually thinking, what you're actually telling yourself. You want to do this because everything that is measured improves. You can't manage what you don't measure. And only once you are self-aware can you actually improve because if you don't know your weak spots, then you can't change those weak spots. And another reason why you want to track your self-talk is because already simply writing down how you feel even if you didn't tell anyone releases stress in of itself of course the best thing would be to talk to other people about your negative self-talk or what you think or bad things that have happened to you because a psychologist james pennebecker found that amongst people who had experienced rape not talking about this incident because of shame or any other reasons was even more detrimental than the incident itself. They found that those who actually talked about it, they had less stress hormones in their blood and they had to go to the doctors less. And you need to track your self-talk so that you can also identify your limiting beliefs or other negative things that you may be telling yourself. Which would then lead me to the next step that you want to change your limiting beliefs. According to Jim Quick, limiting beliefs are lies. Limiting ideas entertained. That is because we often ruminate on these limiting ideas. Many of the limiting beliefs we have are due to a fixed mindset. So what a fixed mindset basically is, is for example, if you failed at a maths test, saying that because you failed, you're stupid and not because you didn't work hard enough. That would rather be a growth mindset if you thought that you just did badly because you didn't work enough and prepare enough for the test. Basically, people with a fixed mindset believe, I'm not good at this. Whereas people with a growth mindset believe, I'm not good at this yet. And that makes a big difference. And of course, people with a growth mindset are much more likely to then take action Whereas if you have limiting beliefs, you won't. The third tip would be that you want to change the questions that you ask yourself. There's so much you can know about a person. For example, that their favourite colour is blue, or what they do for work, or where they live. But that doesn't really say much about them. However, just by knowing one question that they ask themselves over and over again, you will know a lot about their personality. So, for example, if someone asks themselves the whole time, how can I be liked? You will know that this person is very shy and also that this person may feel unlovable because this person wouldn't ask himself how he could be liked if he actually thought that he already was in a position in which he could be liked. And you'll probably al and you'll also know that he is very likely to be a people pleaser because he's always thinking about how other people think about him. Just by knowing a simple question that someone asks themselves, you already know a lot about their views, how they feel and their personality. So if you yourself want to change how you feel, your views or your personality, if you want to change in general, then you also have to change the questions you ask yourself. According to Tony Robbins, 
the quality of your questions determines the quality of your life. So you want to make sure that you have high quality questions. But what exactly would be a high quality question? So for example, why can't I do so and so would be a negative question because it suggests that you can't do that certain thing. If you instead ask yourself, how can I do this certain thing? That would be a growth mindset again. And that would then be a very, very constructive question that you could ask yourself. Another example for a low quality question would be asking yourself, why did I do so and so? Because basically every time you ask yourself why you did so and so, it's basically blaming yourself. And if you want to feel good, of course, you don't want to feel too much shame. So instead of ruminating on the question why you did such and such, ask yourself how you could change that in future instead. And that would then be a constructive question again. And when it comes to, for example, health, a question, someone who asks themselves the question, what tastes good, of course, is going to be much healthier than someone who asks themselves, what could I eat now that would be healthy for me? There's this wonderful quote by Tom Buryu that I absolutely love. And that would be that you should not ask yourself what's the least I can do, but what's the most I can bear. Because if you've got that mindset, then you won't only put minimal amounts of effort in there just to be okay, but you then exceed others and your expectations. My personal favourite question that I'd like to ask myself every now and then is how can so-and-so make me grow? Firstly, because it will make you choose mostly things that only make you grow and improve. But also when it comes to, let's say, negative events that have happened in your life, bad situations, asking yourself how you can grow from these, of course, suggests that this negative event may be a blessing in disguise. And in general, you don't want to ask yourself, why did so-and-so happen to me? But how could so-and-so have happened for me? Which would then bring me to the next point, which is that you want to switch from reactive self-talk to proactive self-talk. So reactive self-talk would be basically saying, why did so-and-so have to happen to me? And all that kind of stuff. Whereas proactive would be, how can I use this? Another example for reactive self-talk would be if you're, for example, in a conflict or so, using so-and-so made me angry as an excuse for maybe becoming aggressive or going into a tantrum. Or you could also blame your bad behaviour on your parents or your environment or some negative situation that might have happened in your past, which also then would be reactive. If you instead ask how your behaviour might have influenced how the conflict with some other person escalated, then you can actually change that. Instead of fighting all the time, finally resolve your problem. However, you don't want to go too far with this proactive thing as in saying that everything is your fault. That would definitely be very, very, very negative self-talk if you blame yourself for every single thing that ever happened to you in your life. Which then would bring me to the fifth tip and the last tip, which would be that you don't want to be too harsh on yourself. We often think that if we tell ourselves how much we suck and how we need to be better and how we're never going to be good enough, that that could actually be motivating. But in actual fact, it can cause a lot of bad behaviour instead of progress. And although this may be very, very motivating in the short term, for the long term, it's definitely going to be very, very toxic because feeling all this shame, you feel, you don't really feel very energetic. You feel very, very kind of low and depleted of energy simply because it's so draining to always blame yourself for everything that's ever happened to you. And of course, if you've got very, very little energy, then it's going to be very difficult for you to make good decisions simply because your prefrontal cortex, this brain region up here, 
which you use for decision making and planning and so on in general. So for all the executor functions, all the executor functions expends a lot of energy. So if you want to make good decisions, you need a lot of energy and you don't want your energy levels to be drained from all this self-hatred and shame. When it comes to food choices, for example, feeling rather positive and being in a positive mood will actually lead to you making better food choices in general. So what exactly is then the best self-talk for making good food choices that are healthy? So there was this study on women who all were on a diet and they were asked to taste a really unhealthy glazed donut which then immediately led to them having broken their diet and then they split these women into three groups one was told okay now that you've ate this donut be self-compassionate with yourself the second one was told that they should simply write down everything that they like about themselves and the third was a kind of control group so they weren't told anything they were just left to do what they usually do which usually would be negative self-talk of course and then they had to somehow try M&Ms but what they didn't know is that afterwards those who led the experiment would actually go in and measure um, in each group how many M&Ms they had and it turned out that those who were self-compassionate had the least M&Ms Whereas, of course, the control group didn't do well at all. But also the people who said that they should simply write down positive things about themselves also didn't do too well. So if you want to go for which self-talk you want to use for making better food choices, then you should always go for self-compassion. And self-compassion basically means instead of just being positive, it's seeing okay yes i've done this it wasn't too good but it's okay we all are fallible it happens and so forth whereas being positive would simply be saying okay it's not bad it's okay everything's wonderful oh what joy and when it comes to negative self-talk how would you feel if a friend told you that you were ugly that you were stupid or that you were worthless. Would you still want to be their friend? No, of course not. You'd be very angry and probably you wouldn't necessarily want to see them ever again. However, we don't accept this treatment from other people, but we treat ourselves the very same way over and over again. What's even worse is that we don't only listen to the negative things that we're telling ourselves, but that we also believe what we're telling ourselves. So what's the best kind of self-talk then? Because you don't want to necessarily say that everything's wonderful and that you can have as many sweets as you want and just be positive and think that having all these sweets is completely fine and that you're not going to put on weight even though you've had so much sweets because you're being positive, which of course is bollocks. But you also don't want to be too strict on yourself, telling yourself how stupid and how awful you are all the time. So how should we then talk to ourselves? I think we should basically talk to ourselves as a parent or a friend, our best friend would talk to us. A true friend or a good parent would tell you the truth that yes, of course, what you did was bad if you've done something bad but it happens to all of us, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad person per se, but you definitely want to make sure that it doesn't happen in the future anymore. If it's happened now, you can't do anything about it, just make sure it doesn't happen in the future anymore and know that I still care about you, I still love you and so forth. So those would then be the five tips on how you can improve your self-talk. If you have this habit of always talking to yourself in a negative way, that you might not only be telling yourself negative things here and there, but that you might in general tell yourself a whole bunch of stories on how you're so awful and why you're unlovable. If you want to change these stories that you tell yourself, you can watch this video here.